Welcome to my channel. My name is Jessie and today I'm starting my April buzzword challenge vlog. The prompt this month is books with the words big or little in the title or similar words and I had a lot more trouble finding a book this month than I did in April and luckily for me I was on my way to Barnes & Noble to pick up the book that is in Jan Agaton's April Full Moon Book Club pick and so while I was there I found my buzzword challenge book. At first I was going to pick up I think it's a little life but I've heard really mixed things about it and I wasn't sold on it and then I came across What Big Teeth by Rose Sosbo. I've seen this book several times at my Barnes and Noble and I finally decided it was time to pick it up. The cover is really interesting and I've been interested in it for a while but it was never a top priority any other time. I was having trouble looking on Libby and Scribd and so I think this will work out well for me. This book follows Eleanor. She was sent to a boarding school when she was young and she's just come home and she's readjusting her life at home. Her family is described as a family of monsters and they apparently, according to the summary, spend the day prowling the woods and reading the guts of birds for fortunes. And so I'm interested to see where this goes. I've read a little bit of it. I don't know if you can really see. I bookmarked with the tab for now because I just haven't gotten the bookmark out of my drawer yet. I will probably give a real update once I get to the one third mark. I'm not very far yet. I feel like I will also most likely be listening to the audiobook quite a bit. I have it on hold on Libby. It says it'll be ready soon. Um, but I just know I have a lot going on and audiobooks are easier, but I also might read along with the physical book. So we will see what's going on. But I think I will just update you once I get to the one third mark. been a few days since I last updated it and I feel like I say that a lot and I guess that just means I need to get better at updating sooner after I finish reading instead of waiting and trying to think or waiting for the perfect time. I caught up to the one third mark of What Big Teeth Monday evening while my sister and I were at the gym. I was listening to the audiobook and I was going to update when I got home but by the time we got home we had a thunderstorm going on. Rowan is now scared of thunderstorms. And we also were under a tornado watch until I think two in the morning, which I know a watch and a warning are different, but you know, since like in March, we just had tornado. I guess we're like all on a little bit more higher alert than we would normally be. And then yesterday was a really busy day. Yesterday morning, Ro and I went to visit my grandmother before he went to speech, he went to speech. We went and got lunch with my dad. We went and ran a few errands in town before we finally got home. And then my sister and I went to the gym again. We don't normally go two nights in a row. But just lately, we've had a little bit of trouble being consistent with everything going on. So we just went ahead and went last night since we both wanted to. And I'm now ready to update this book. The first third of this book so far has been Eleanor coming home from boarding school. You kind of already know that her family, I guess, are essentially werewolves, although that term hasn't really been used. But her family does turn into wolves. And she can't for whatever reason. So she was sent to boarding school and she wasn't allowed to come home for the summers. Her grandmother just wouldn't let her for whatever reason. But her family doesn't know why she didn't come home during the summers. Her family thought it was Eleanor's own doing that Eleanor didn't want to come home. And so Eleanor has definitely forgotten a lot about her family and she's struggling to fit back in. She's really struggling to get along with everyone. She's also trying not to catch her grandfather's attention too much or to show herself as prey because her grandfather apparently, I guess, has the least control over his wolf and is the most likely to get her. Eleanor also had a really rough time at boarding school. She didn't fit in at home before boarding school, not really, but she loved her family and she kind of has vague memories of them, but not strong memories. And then boarding school was pretty awful for her, it seems. She didn't really have very many friends. Most of the girls apparently didn't like her very much. And whenever she gets home, she kind of, I guess, seems to have forgotten the roles and roles of her family life. Her grandmother has also recently died uh, since she's been home and her grandmother made her in charge of some stuff and her one role is don't let strangers into the house. So I'm sure at some point in the book, Eleanor's gonna let a stranger into the house or someone else is going to do it and Eleanor's not gonna be able to stop them. Actually, I can think of the stranger, just kidding. I guess it depends on your definition of a stranger maybe as well. There's this family friend named Arthur who I guess was an accountant for the grandmother or he did something like that and helped her, 
you know, manage the money side of her family business. And I am trying to figure out what's going on with Arthur because at this point, it seems like everyone in the house has some type of infatuation with Arthur as well as he knows everything about the family that Eleanor doesn't, even though he was not part of the family. He's like just the only outsider who I guess has the closest relationship. Her sister Luma, who's a couple of years older than her and their cousin Reese, who I don't know how old he is, but I would assume they're all within around five to six years of each other. They all three are infatuated with Arthur. Luma seems the only seems to be the only one who's like, I guess, the closest to seeing him. Whereas Eleanor does get to spend a lot of time with him, but he helps a lot with like guiding her, I guess, on the business matters so far. His role in the book is kind of weird to me so far. As well as even Eleanor's own dad also seems to have a weird infatuation with Arthur. Like I just I can't figure out what's going on with Arthur. And even Eleanor doesn't know quite how old he is. And then in like the last chapter, Eleanor gets hit twice by two different family members. I don't know what's going on with this book at this point. It's interesting, but I also don't know what's going on. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I know I'm gonna keep reading. Eleanor also recently got in touch with her mother's with her mother's mother, who she's never met before and I guess didn't even know existed prior to coming home. And so I feel like that's going to set off a mess. But Eleanor also knows she's different from her family. She's not able to turn into the wolf. Her blood is different. Just something about her isn't right. And she was sent away for essentially being a monster. Someone at the funeral for her grandmother essentially says, you know, y'all should have gotten rid of Eleanor when you had the chance or something. I don't know how I feel. So I guess I could talk about other stuff though, because that's kind of the plot that's going so far. The atmosphere of this book actually reminds me of Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I think it's the fact that it's just this, you know, big isolated house away from the town, but you know, this how but the house and family are still important to the town in some ways. But they don't interact with the town or the family. The house is also dark and I don't know if it's really dingy, but the house is also just like really dark and everything. And when you go outside it's bright and, and stuff. So it's just like the atmosphere of the house, the whole not knowing what's going on with other people kind of reminds me of uh, Mexican Gothic. And so that's kind of interesting to me. I guess I will update you once I get to the next third. I kind of want to finish this today, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. But this is an interesting book. It's just I don't know how I feel about it. And I just don't know. It's also very slow paced. I am now two thirds of the way through this book. And let me just say the chapter lengths are all over the place. I believe the first third was about five chapters long and the middle third was only two chapters. I have literally only read two chapters and they were about 130 something pages total. My complaint isn't necessarily that the chapters are inconsistent, like in lengthwise, my complaint is that the chapters that are long are so long it's hard to find a stopping point. But so far I'm still intrigued. I'm interested to see what's going to happen but at the same time I don't really know that I'm particularly liking this book all that much. Like this is something that I don't feel like I'm going to reread unless I just love the ending. But in this third Eleanor has learned more about what she is and how she's different from her family although she doesn't seem to be quite putting it together just yet. She is seeing more similarities between herself and her mother's mother who she invited without her mother's uh, permission, I guess. And she's also kind of seen, you know, all of her other family members be disturbed and freaked out by her grandmother and they don't like her and she just can't figure out why or what's going on, especially the grandfather. He seems to really dislike the grandmother. And I don't know why, but she seems oblivious to what her grandmother is able to do and capable of doing in some ways. And I don't know if it's on purpose or what. She's also at the same time learning more about her grandmother Persephone, the one who just died. She's learning about that woman's past and you know, why she was the way she was or how things came to be. And so I'm interested by also like, I want to know what's going to happen, but also I don't know if this is something I'll ever reread again after this because I'm just, I'm not loving it, but also I do want to know what's going to happen. I do have a little over a hundred pages left to finish this book. And so I do intend to do that this afternoon. I need to do a couple things first. It's not a favorite book, but I am gonna keep reading it to figure out what's going on. I will say that out of all of my buzzword picks. This one's my least favorite so far, but once again, th there's still a third left. I could come back and I could love it. I just, I'm not sure how it's going to end. Overall though, I'm going to keep reading and I'll update you when I'm finished with this book.
All right, hey, I just finished What Big Teeth. I took the cover off while I was reading the last few pages, and I think it's going to be a three-star rating for me. Overall, the idea of the story interested me more than the actual story, and I felt a little too confused throughout most of it, and even just the end of it, I'm not particularly satisfied with parts of the ending. I'm not really quite sure. I, you find out more about Arthur's role in the book and kind of how he came to be so enmeshed in the family, but I feel like you don't really know why so many people in the family are obsessed with him and are in love with him almost in some ways. The grandmother's ghost plays a bigger role in the end. It wasn't a bad book by any means, but I do wish I had liked it more and I don't know what it is. It just wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. So I think a three star rating is pretty fair just because, you know, there wasn't just anything bad about it. I didn't hate it. I just wanted to like it more than I did. The idea of the story was more interesting than the actual story. I liked that there was some resolution for the family conflict by the end of the book. I liked learning more about the grandmother's past and um, the grandfather's past. And the way Arthur came to be in the family was interesting, but I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I guess really that's it for this particular vlog though. I don't really have any deep thoughts on the end of this book. I don't really have any in-depth thoughts that don't spoil the ending. But overall, it was an okay book. Not my favorite, but I am glad I read it. And I am glad I finally read it because I have seen this book at Barnes & Noble every time I go for the past year and a half or so. So at least I read it and I know what happens. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I will talk to you later. Bye.